The hour is coming, has indeed already come, when the dead will hear the voice of God. And then again in the Gospel to reiterate, he says, Amen, Amen, I say to you. The hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. From the very grip of death into life. From the sense that all is gone, new life appears and only by the very voice of God. And so it is that the vacant seat, the seat that was once held by His Holiness Benedict XVI, emeritus now, that seat that was empty and left in a sense of wondering, a sense of emptiness, a sense that we were without our leader, our Father. The Father's chair was empty. We know what that is like in our families. We know what it is like in the family of the Church. A great desire to know who will take up the place, who will continue the work of Jesus Christ, who will be the successor of Peter, to whom Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom, and the great commission, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Who will take up such great responsibility? Who will come to the chair of the one who will lead as Father, as Holy Father, as Vicar of Christ on earth, as successor of Peter? There were many, many questions and much interest about the conclave. Great expectation and wondering and description of what it is like. I would like to add one image to the descriptions that we have heard time and again. Please allow this image into your mind and heart. When the words were spoken, extra omnes, everyone out, the doors were locked, and it was a most intimate time to be with our Lord. For this was the moment when our Lord would come back to his apostles and begin the great interaction. Simon, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? You know that I love you, Lord. Feed my sheep. I would like you to, for a brief moment, envision Jesus himself in a mystical way, standing before the one who would be chosen, and in a very mystical and spiritual way, Jesus began a dialogue with that man, whom we now know as Cardinal Bergoglio. Jesus spoke to him, do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and I need you to imagine that man in dialogue with Jesus, feeling all the more wretched, all the more frightened, all the more concerned. What am I going to be asked to do? How shall I respond? What does he see in me that he does not see in the others? I need you to begin to see Jesus in that Sistine Chapel, standing right before the one who would be chosen. 
and be in dialogue. And I need you to see, as would have happened with the disciples, the others, when Jesus was speaking to Peter, asking him those questions, they were all looking. What are they talking about? What is it that they're saying? Why does Peter look like that? And I need you to imagine, just for a brief moment, this profound spiritual moment when everyone there in that room is beginning to know something is happening and it is from the Lord. It is not from us. It is not from the outside. It is not from public opinion. It is not from what people say, this is what I want, that's what I want, this is what I want. It is Jesus speaking to the heart of the one he has chosen. And others are beginning to say, I think something's happening. And then I want you to imagine one more thing. Our Blessed Lady, Mary, the mother of Jesus, sitting down beside the one who would be chosen and whispering into his ear as she did at the wedding feast of Cana, do whatever he tells you. And then making her way throughout that whole conclave, seat to seat, cardinal to cardinal, whispering, do whatever he tells you. That is why it took so many ballots. It's, she's moving slower. <laughs> She spoke, and Jesus spoke, and the dialogue bore fruit. White smoke began to rise, bells began to peal, and the jubilant announcement, we have a hope. There is one to whom Jesus went and asked, do you love me? One whom the Lord chose, one whom the Lord singled out, do you love me? In that moment, others began to feel a stirring and a knowledge. There is something happening here. And all caught up in this moment, however it becomes apparent, it is now apparent to us that the word was spoken to a cardinal from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, down in the southern hemisphere, in this our continent. And he is one who takes the name Francis. He is one who comes from a long heritage. He is one who prays and seeks for the rebuilding of the church in the simplest way. He is one who himself comes forward onto the balcony, onto the loggia, and in the simplest way walks out with hands at his side. Who shall gainsay the approach of one who comes with hands at his side? Is there anything less threatening? Is there anything that speaks more eloquently? Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. In a pose, a pose that is absolutely, utterly unaffected. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Jesus glorifies his heavenly Father. Mary rejoices to see the new wine begin to come forward. And we rejoice as we say, we have a hope. We have a Father. The chair is not empty, but from one to the next, to the next, to the next, in an unbroken succession, there is the presence of the one who is the successor of Peter, the one to whom Jesus had said, feed my lambs, pasture my sheep, the one commission that is given time and time again down through history. And now tonight we celebrate the great mass of thanksgiving and ask God's blessing that indeed our Holy Father Francis will give glory to God and 
warm the church by his presence. Warm the church by his love. Warm the church by his faith. Warm the church so that it can warm the world. A world that has grown in some places very cold, very sharp, where winds of indecision blow, and a coldness that can turn away from life and seek something else. But as scripture says, the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. And he will warm the world with a new breath of life and that warmth of a lifeblood that is the blood of Jesus Christ himself. This then is why we bedeck our doorway, our portal, with the gold and the white, the papal colors. This is when the family gathers, as so often families do, at times of greatest sorrow and greatest joy. Well, during this greatest joy, the family all around the world, and many who wish us well, and many who are just curious, are being invited in. Come in, it is so good that we are together. Come, share our Master's joy. Yes, the hour is coming, and indeed is already here, when even the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Could you imagine a soul that has been completely deadened by sin, completely deadened by despair, completely deadened by the emptiness of a life that just seems to have no purpose. Hearing the sound, mystically, of the voice of God, the voice of Jesus, who spoke and said, Do you love me? Feed my lambs, tend my sheep. Can you imagine one who has been in this world so dead and alone, being overwhelmed by the encounter of this man who came out on the loggia, hands at his side. I have nothing to fear. I know I can come back. And one who seemed dead, and in fact was, could come back and renew the relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Holy Father, Francis, who came out to the world this day. Habeng.